Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. I really, I'm really sorry for the delay. We had some uh, technical issues, but everything should be fine now. Um, so welcome, everyone, to this new museum talk. Today, we welcome Mathilde Leduc Grimaldi. Mathilde is, uh, is in charge of the Stanley Archives and Collections here at the museum. And she's also in charge of uh, training programs for students from Central Africa in history and uh, archive management. But um, today she will talk about her latest book. So uh, Finding Dr. Livingston History and Documents from the Henry Morton Stanley Archives. Uh, she published this book together with Professor James Newman. And uh, in this book, they transcribed and annotated all of Stanley's archives related to his expedition to find uh, David Livingston. So there's his field notes, um, uh, journals, contracts with workers, uh, letters, etc. And so by transcribing all these archives, uh, they really facilitate uh, research on these archives because the, the archives are here at the museum and they're public, but they are not easy to read, if, especially if you're not used to Stanley's handwriting. Um, I've, I've seen them and it's honestly not that easy to read. So this book uh, facilitates research on these archives and it not only for researchers, but to anyone who's interested in, uh, in this period. But I'm not going to say any more. Uh, I will give the floor to Mathilde Le Duc. As, um, as always, you can ask your questions in the questions tab. So please ask your questions in the questions tab, but not in the, in the chat. And, um, and voila, and, uh, uh, Mathilde, the, the floor is yours. Thank you for a very kind and very generous introduction, uh, Jonas. Um, I would like to, th to thank Jonas and Eileen and the communication department at the museum for welcoming me today. And I really would like to thank you all for taking the time uh, on your lunch break, especially in this uh, uh, problematic moment we're all going through. Um, the museum talk of today is the outcome of several years of work, uh, of Professor James Newman and myself, to bring the publication of those private archives of Henry Morton Stanley concerning the search and meeting um, between Stanley and Livingston at Ujiji in Tanzania on uh, November 10th, 1871. The publication was made possible by the joint efforts of the African Museum and Ohio University Press that cares for the publication of text and primary sources focusing on African history. Uh, the volume subtitle gives you a span of our work, A History in Documents from the Henry Morton Stanley Archive. Um, first, let me discuss these archives. Um, their owner, the King Bowden Foundation, entrusted these archives to the Africa Museum with the will to see them inventorized and most of all open freely and accessible to anyone from scientists to students, uh, to artists, to freelancers, genealogists, etc. Uh, how these archives came to the museum is a long story. Henry M. Stanley had already died in 1904 before the present museum was built. Uh, by that date, uh, by the date of the opening of the museum in 1910, so to Henry Leopold II, his instigator. It took some time before the gathering of historical element to took place. It is Marshall Well in 1949 who kicked off the project of pushing to the forefront historical studies as an independent academic act activity. Upon his initiative, a uh, systematic purchase of archival document was made that was continued by Frank Albrecht. In 1954, a small exhibition commemorating um, Stanley's 50th anniversary um, took place, and Denzel Stanley, uh, Stanley's adopted son, was present. Um, and as a consequence, he donated to the museum some documents uh, from the archive and some photographs. After Denzel Stanley's death, his uh, son Richard Stanley uh, took over the uh, delicate task to sell the archives and Marcel Luell to find the fund for that uh, and get what was thought at the time to be the entirety of the archive. Uh, but in 20,000, uh, sorry, 200, the um, 
descendants of Stanley decided to sell First Hill Manor, which was the sole property Stanley ever bought, and uh, to some more, um, at that time, some more crates full of archive reemerged in the house. Um, they were to be auctioned by Christie's, and in 2002 and 03, the um, the sorry, I'm, I'm forgot to check to turn down the notification there. Sorry about that. I apologize. Where were we? Yeah. So yeah, um, the the archive that reemerged uh, in Fuzz Hill were uh, to be auctioned by Christie's. And in 2002 and 2003, the King Bowden Foundation could provide the funds to buy a large part of the remaining archive. Large part only since many buyers were present and eager to buy two. And so uh, the whole archive is what's uh, once, once owned by Stanley himself are now the property of the King Bowden Foundation, except some items acquired later or scattered around. Uh, and it's now held in trust at the Africa Museum. Um, then, of course, came the next step, uh, the necessity of making an inventory. And it was an exhausting task that um, my predecessor, Maurice Wainens, and Peter Darden completed successfully, uh, more or less by 2005. So that's a little bit more than 15 years ago. Uh, this means that about 7,000 entry numbers were inventoried. Now, one entry number is not one page. In many cases, one entry in the inventory comprises more than 500 pages. Um, that's the case, for example, of uh, several of Stanley's diaries. Um, so in total, uh, we can consider that the Stanley archive encompass uh, more than 50,000 pages. So that gives you an idea of the bulk of the information available there. Um, so throughout his life, uh, Stanley meticulously kept and preserved everything he wrote. Every little bit of paper was kept up to a certain extent. For instance, we have on less than a fourth of a page the list of addressees of letters that David Livingston gave him to bring back to England when they parted uh, on March 14, 1872 in, um, at Unyanyembe. Uh, he kept every letter he received, every invitation and congratulation and visit cards. During his travels, he filled pages of small notebooks, approximately nine centimeters per 15 centimeters in pencil, uh, without margin, without pagination, that were written from both hands at the same time. Um, those might be used later on to write his journals, but not entirely. For instance, Stanley noted names of plants, uh, words in Swahili that he mastered, um, names of people he met, etc. Then he reworked in ink over the pencil uh, some of the pages, which give a hard time to the reader. Uh, so I'm going to try to see up to what extent. Yeah, that's the book. That's an idea. Yeah, so I was talking about the archive and what it looked like. This is one of an excerpt of a page uh, that have been transcribed um, and which is now published. So it's kind of different. Um, Beside that, so those archives are not were not very well kept while they were at first hill in uh, Stanley's family's hand. Um, first hill is located in Surrey. You know, humid weather, disinterest or neglect of some of the descendant, um, tentative to put pages in order by punching holes in them, probably to put them in a ring biter, torn out binding, um, all took their toll on the archive before they arrived uh, um, in Belgium. Then come the question of the pages torn out. Uh, who did that? Um, were they blank pages? Uh, to be filled later, were they already written and torn out by a discontent family member? Were they stolen and when? Um, after all it happens from time to time that pieces of Stanley with Stanley's writing are advertised for sale on the internet. Um, of course, this question came to mind when transcribing the documents and, of course, comparison of film notebooks to the more accomplished pages of the journals and some letters. 
sometimes help the reading or give the link between the pages. This is why we took care uh, with Professor um, Newman to annotate our transcription and we have published them to help uh, conserve fragile documents, hardly readable as you can see, um, hardly visible in most of the time, and to offer researchers the uh, opportunity to work with original manuscripts in an easy way um, as they have been thoroughly transcribed and annotated. When it comes to more precisely um, to the uh, Livingston ex uh, exhibition and the years 1870 to 72, uh, the journals and notebooks in which he reported his travels in details became the source for his uh, 10 dispatches to the New York Herald and to his book, uh, How I Found Livingston, which remain iconic among travel narratives. Um, hints and advices in the letter from the New York Herald executives like Anderson, Levine, and Hosmer, to whom Stanley reported, uh, revealed that he didn't have a full freedom of speech in his own writings. Moreover, Gordon Bennett Jr., the, the owner and press tycoon, um, he owned the um, New York Herald, uh, well, Gordon Bennett was a much feared boss who had sacked many travel correspondents. As Stanley said to uh, Livingston in um, diaries number, according to diary number 11, um, and I quote, I serve a hard taskmaster. Um, Stanley also had to comply with the wishes of his book editor, Edward Marston, uh, so as to um, suit the general public's desire to read about obviously dramatized event. The diaries, film notebooks, and related later, uh, letters, sorry, um, let us view the uncensored Stanley recording that of what he saw, who he met, who he felt, and most importantly, how he acted. Of course, it's from his own perspective. In many ways, the words are more vivid than uh, those in published form, and they provide historians and other scholars with more meaningful evidence uh, with which to evaluate Stanley, both as a person and the roles he played in shaping the views and action toward, um, uh, toward the scramble for Africa and the Imperial Age. The number of documents dating back to Stanley's expedition um, that have survived until now is remarkable, given that he had no home base and led a rather nomadic life. His permanent address was the New York Herald office, care of the chief officer to whom uh, letters and trunks were both sent and dispatched. Hotels like the uh, Queens and Langham in London also served as um, addresses. Still, somehow, Stanley seems to have uh, kept virtually every piece of paper, um, be it everything you may think about. Um, Two-fold journal, number seven and 11, and three pocket-sized film notebook, number eight, nine, and 10, are entirely dedicated to um, Stanley's traveling during the uh, New York Herald expedition, uh, from his landing at Zanzibar to his departure from there uh, in January 5th, 1871, um, up to May 29, uh, 1872. Both are producing full in the book. In addition, excerpt from three other journals concerning Stanley's travel to Zanzibar and departure to England, number four, five, and 12 in the inventory, are added uh, in the annexes section. Uh, diary number 73, which was compiled later and covers many years, contains some further useful information uh, about the expedition in search of Livingston. Um, the Africa Museum has a very well preserved account book, number 74, covering Stanley's mission from 1868 to 1879. With it are pages torn out uh, from another account book, which is original, uh, an original by Stanley of expenditure incurring during the search of Livingston. The first page only is missing. Fortunately, the whole account of the Herald expedition was copied later, uh, later sorry, on, um, uh, with some faulty readings uh, of the original. 
Um, and the copy provides the missing first page with expenditure on arms. At the end of these attached pages, figures, and the original master roll of the expedition, a document with names, salaries, fines, and rewards of the um, African uh, scouts, porters, enlisted in the expedition are included. The three notebooks served as a primary source for Stanley Stewart journals. They contain notes jotted down in pencil on the spot in no apparent order and quite often are not dated. He wrote from the both ends of the notebook, and thus one um, has uh, to read backward and upside down from a time um, in order to connect the narratives. The um, Some passage in pencil have been rewritten over in black ink, uh, with many letters dropped, an indication of haste. It is unclear if Stanley intended that such passages in uh, pencil should be left out when writing uh, his journals. None of the diaries of Phil Notebook um, is paginated. Days and occasionally Stanley's um, noting uh, continued, in, in quotes, um, helped us correct the linkage of the pages. Reconstruction of the field notebooks with damaged binding, some loose pages and non sequitur notes were more difficult to interpret. In order to make the text more comprehensible to the readers, um, Professor Newman and myself had to rely on broken words or line at the end of the pages. Reconstructing the intelligible order of the field notebooks was a puzzling task. For example, in a note in um, diary number eight, Stanley mentioned that page 132 follows page 71, which is clear enough. Uh, however, most of the time he left no indication about connection. For example, uh, on page 107, he notes that, uh, quote, he has heard from, end of quote, follows on page 108 with the native repeatedly. So the sentence doesn't like a line here. In order to ease the reading, uh, pages are published in logical order, but uh, transcribed pages um, have been numbered in brackets as they appear in the manuscripts. Punctuation is often non-existent, especially when lines in in the fold of the journal or sometimes unorthodox. We have not bothered to make changes as long as the text is intelligible. Slip of the pen or misspelling are left uncorrected, uh, but indicated uh, in bracket for like SSP for Stanley spelling. As can be seen, journals and notebooks overlap each other. Let me show you where we stand. Yeah, we have another excerpt of uh, uh, two pages from, um, I think it's notebook uh, eight and nine. Um, yeah, here we go. So we have here basically the summary of the archive dedicated to um, Livingston expedition, uh, um, Stanley's expedition to uh, meet with Livingston. And you have an idea of the number of pages. So roughly we're uh, over 100, um, 500, sorry, pages altogether. You have uh, uh, the size and whether, you know, it's pencil, ink and pencil uh, mix, etc. And you have here, Right, uh, per uh, diary and film notebook, um, what covered which uh, time period? Um, yeah, so um, what we can see is that journals and notebooks overlap each other, especially for the uh, month of November and December when Stanley met Livingston at Ujiji, and then they cruised uh, together on Lake Tanganyika, uh, among other to find out whether or not the Rusizi River linked the lake to uh, the Nile watershed. It did not. Uh, the note made were often as short as one word or a brief expression such as, quote, uh, I am no shorthand writer, though I have a system of my own of abbreviating sentences, which is intelligible to myself." End of quote. Um, Stanley went on to say that he refrained from uh, taking too many notes as, quote, it occupies too much of the night to write them up. And that are excerpt uh, from um, diary number 11. 
So we have limited this volume uh, strictly to the story of the expedition, which ends with Stanley sailing back to Europe. As much debated reception uh, in England um, has been left uh, aside. Interpretations can be found in the various biographies of Stanley's. African explorers of the Victorian, sorry, Afri African travelers of the Victorian age, quote, have proved uh, immensely popular subject for biograph biographical studies, um, according to several uh, academics of nowadays. With regard to Stanley, uh, several earlier studies did consult some of the paper kept by the family at First Hill Estate uh, in Surrey. By far the best, uh, the best of the lot is probably Richard Hall's Stanley's an adventurer explored. Uh, when he, um, when the archived, uh, the archives moved fr uh, uh, from the UK to Belgium, and the museum, uh, the documents were not immediately available to the public due to the fact that they had to be uh, inventorized. Um, and Professor Newman gained access pretty early on um, as part of the effort to inventorize the archive. Um, the um, um, main archivist in charge of the program, uh, Maurice Swainens, um, and uh, Peter Darden created the inventory uh, as it is online today, in, um, uh, and it was online in 2003, as far as I remember. I was not working in the museum just yet. Um, and Maurice Swainen had envisioned producing a series of publication based on the archive, but an untimely uh, passing left the project in abeyance. Uh, so in 2010, the editor of this volume decided to begin a series of transcription uh, of the archives. Three, three years later, the first was issued, a manuscript by Stanley relating to his travel in Turkey during 1866. And once it was released um, in 2013, well, we began working uh, and envisioning the volume that um, we're talking about today. So, um, as a correspondent for the New York Herald, Stanley's first duty was to send dispatches to the newspaper offices in New York or London. He always followed uh, the orders given and was quite anxious not to make a decision that the uh, New York Herald uh, could judge wrong or risky. As noted, uh, Bennett regularly sacked people uh, and Stanley was eager not to join them. Um, as he recorded uh, regarding the search for Livingston, quote, I should say Bennett would never forgive me for running away from my duty to him. Uh, from what I know of him, he would even begrudge a few days, um, I must naturally stay here, and would say, your duty was to ask questions and, and note answers, obtain a formal acknowledgement that you had seen him, and hurry back to the coast with the news, end of quote. There is no doubt that the um, Livingston assignment provided a golden opportunity not to be missed. Fame would come Stanley's way uh, with a best-selling book as a possibility. Uh, he noted in diary number seven um, that um, it was uh, the, the diary was to, I quote, contain as much information respecting myself as uh, may be condensed to the limit of the pages within. He elaborated uh, upon this in How I Found Livingston by remarking that it must be remembered that I am writing a narrative of my own adventure and travels, and that um, until I met Livingston, I presume the greatest interest uh, is attached to myself, my marches, my trouble, my thoughts, and my impression." End of quote. To solve both the material and financial issue of arranging uh, this expedition, Stanley had to rely on himself for most thing. Views about his this are clear in diary number seven, as are his concerns, including an experience as a chief of expedition, the lack of a valuable second in command, bouts of illness, knowledge of the country only from books, uh, at the beginning, the uh, secrecy of the whole operation, and finally, no definite budget from the New York Herald. In addition, Stanley felt highly insecure about having little in common with scientific travelers or with literally um, tourists. 
plagued by such doubts and uh, fear that he might not succeed in his quest to uh, meet with Livingston, this, um, this journal shows Stanley not as a uh, triumphant um, American hero, but rather more as a human being struggling with self-doubt. After having achieved his gold at Ujiji and meeting Stanley, Stanley's introspection sank into the background. As diary number 11 shows, uh, Livingston and uh, Stanley's growing affection for him became the center of uh, attention. Their meeting and the time spent together also sowed uh, the seed of Stanley's becoming a scientific traveler and explorer and man uh, with a mission in life. Um, I would like now to go through um, more precisely the chronology of um, his trip in Tanzania. In How I Found Livingston, Henry Morton Stanley claimed on that on October 17, 1869, his boss, Gordon, James Gordon Bennett, owner of the New York Herald, told him to, quote, find Livingston. A meeting between Stanley and Bennett did take place in October 1869, although um, on the 28th, not the 17th, and indeed instruction to search for Livingston were given, um, but only after Stanley completed other assignments that would take him from uh, the Suez Canal to India and possibly beyond. On August 1st, 1870, Stanley reached Bombay, Mumbai. After a, week, a few weeks there, uh, mostly spent writing up his note, he decided that uh, the time had come to head for uh, uh, Africa, if not, though he was not sure where Livingston uh, uh, was. To get there uh, required, um, Stanley first um, boarded a ship uh, bound for Mauritius, then picked another one headed for the Seychelles, where he boarded a third that uh, dropped him off at Zanzibar on January 6, 1871. Good news awaited. Uh, the doctor's whereabouts were still uh, unknown. A possible journalistic coup thus lay before him, but achieving it would require forming a caravan for a long march inland. Local Arabs, Arabs familiar with the booming trades in ivory and slaves from uh, inland region provided information about the route and the necessary supplies. Stanley, however, had little money um, to uh, cover the considerable cost of an expedition and um, the expected bank deposit from the New York Herald had not arrived. To this great good fortune, the American consul, uh, Francis Webb, agreed to guarantee Stanley's needed purchase and um, to safely store them. On February 5th, four doughs uh, filled to the brim uh, left Zanzibar for Bag and Moyo uh, on the uh, mainland, a favorite place along the coast for uh, hiring Wapagazis. Wapagazi were recruited under a written contract. I should, where's the contract? Oh, okay, yeah, you have an idea here of the trip uh, going um, from Zanzibar via Bagamoyo to the Tanganyika Lake. A uh, few drawings. This is Said Bargash bin Said Al Busaid, Sultan of Zanzibar, a key figure at the time. Uh, he had just accessed the, tr the, the throne uh, when Stanley was there, and he's the one who gave the uh, um, valid safe notes for him to travel in um, Eastern Africa. Um, and then we have some of the contracts here. Um, so, yeah, so the Wapagazis were recruited under a written contract with names, salaries, duration of the expedition, functions as boy, porters, soldiers, scouts, translators, etc. And the promise remained with the chief of the expedition uh, until the end of it, quote, to obey orders promptly and do all of their power to promote harmony and the interest of the expedition, uh, end of quote. Um, Several of the um, several of them could be listed on the same contract signed or marked by all the parties. They received part of their annual salary upon signing the contract, thus giving them the opportunity to do business in the uh, markets along the road for themselves. 
um, there was a strict hierarchy among uh, them, lacking soldier during uh, the episode of the war against Mirambo, Stanley offered some of his porters the opportunity to become soldiers uh, for twice their original salary. Needless to say, they accepted. Um, on average, porters uh, toted 60 pounds on their head, and Stanley knew exactly who was carrying what, according to uh, diary number nine. In addition, a porter might have to clear a path through low branches or thorny bushes. Sorry. Contingent on the difficulties of the terrain, access to water and markets, and their loads, they normally march from two to four or five hours per day, but sometimes longer march or terraquesa up to 18 to 20 miles were required. required. <coughs> Sorry. The Kirangosi woke up and grouped the muster, blew his horn to give the signal of the march, and showed the road through, um, though Stanley noted that his Kirangosis lost the road several times, and so he had to guide the caravan by himself uh, in a few cases. A caravan was not an army in marching order, and porters arrived in disarray at the end of the march. Stanley mentioned several cases of desertion, Penalties for those caught varies, including fines and chaining during a day or more. Uh, unfortunately, a deserter alone was uh, an easy prey for slavers. Uh, the chief of the expedition, like the captain of a ship, had sole responsibility for the success of his expedition and thus had to oversee virtually everything. Route, food, dangerous physical condition of his employees. A camp must be kept long with a logbook and the camp secured uh, with bales and arms accounted for. Fights or misconduct sometimes required intervention and esprit de corps uh, must be maintained. Such constant effort led Stanley to regret that he had no uh, kidogo or second in command to assist him. The absence of a kidogo, besides the smaller figures given for the caravan in diary number seven, uh, could be an indication of a less numerous muster than Stanley reported in his printed narrative of the expedition. Uh, Stanley uh, certainly was a demanding master, um, but he knew the importance of reward and kept a chart of those deserving of such, cloth being the usual payment. He made special efforts to recruit skilled uh, Swahili personnel, uh, including tailor, carpenters, hunters, and above all, scouts and speakers of vernacular languages acting as translators. Stanley preferred to hire professional carriers well known to European travelers from their previous travel, like Baruti the soldier and Mabruki Speak, both of whom had traveled with Burden and Speak, but unfortunately die, um, died with his expedition. Let me see, I should have. Okay. Yeah, you have Manuel Serra here. Um, this is Kalulu. We have, oh, no. I thought I had Manuel Serra. I'm going to go back to Manuel Serra. Stanley knew uh, the porters and um, the scouts uh, personally by their name. He knew their skills, strengths, and weakness, but above all, uh, he loads their courage, devotion, intelligence, and sense of diplomacy to the point of sending them on delicate mission to other, um, other local uh, sultans and chief. When back at Zanzibar in 1872, many of them signed a two years contract on, um, on behalf of Livingston, then later joined Stanley for his Trans-African expedition, and a few were still uh, uh, working with him in Congo in the years 1880s. So first, Stanley had to go from Bagaboyo to, uh, to Bora. Um, it was kind of a complicating moment. A cholera epidemic had taken a large toll on the life, uh, on life uh, in the area. And only recently had um, able-bodied survivor begun to show up and recover. In all, more than a month's path uh, before enough men could be hired and go through. Following advice from several locals, Stanley formed six smaller caravans um, designed to meet at Tabora, an important commercial center uh, above 430 miles away as the crow flies, but more than 500 miles on the ground. 
The first caravan left uh, on February 18, and the last one uh, with Stanley in charge on March the 22nd. Right from the start, Stanley faced one difficulty after uh, another, and so did uh, the Kirangosis and the Wapagasis. Muddy uh, riverbanks slowed uh, the pace, especially of the pack uh, animals, and the Mesica, or long rainy season, soon broke and um, to make condition worse. Um, thick stands of thorn bushes uh, tore at uh, closes and uh, the skin, and an array of diseases afflicted men and beasts alike. Um, the first to go down were his two horses given to uh, Stanley um, by uh, Sultan Zanzibar, who wished him well. Uh, one died of worms and the other uh, from horse sickness spread by bites of midges and gnats. Badly needed donkey fell in the wayside on a regular basis due to the disease and overwork, uh, while regular bouts of dysentery plagued the porters, the scouts, and the interpreter and several of them succumbed uh, to the smallpox. Samuel himself experienced two uh, debilitating attack of malaria at the time mistakenly attributed to miasma or bad air. All along the way, porters, deser um, porters deserted at every opportunity. Following caravan practices, Stanley responded by lashing those caught with a whip he carried. Such punishment did little good in, in halting the exodus and uh, the whipping would later be used against him as an illustration of his brutal nature. Upon reaching Ugogo, about halfway to Tabora, Stanley fumed over numerous demand for Honga, a customary um, uh, payment to local African authorities for right of passage uh, through their lands. It took hours, sometimes even a day or two, to reach an agreement about the amount of cloth and or uh, beads to be handed over. Beyond a go-go, uh, the caravan passed um, burned villages and abandoned fields, a testimony to the uh, horror caused uh, by the slave and ivory traders that recently visited the area. After 94 days of travel, Stanley's caravan reached Tabora, where Arab traders uh, welcomed him warmly, providing foods and comfort not seen for quite a while. Pleasant quarters awaited in the nearby village of Quihara. Despite the safe arrival um, of the other caravan, only 25 men signed on to continue the journey. Hiring replacement, this became a top priority. The destination would be Ujiji, another trading town on the eastern shore of uh, Lake Tanganyika, where rumors now suggested Livingston either resided or would arrive soon. A serious obstacle, however, confronted Stanley. Mirambo, a, lo a local um, strongman, had assembled a highly disciplined army to, um, in an effort to secure the um, uh, region's trade, and he was now controlled, um, controlling the direct way uh, from Tabora. No caravan could thus path. To break Marambo's blockade, the Arabs prepare for uh, what they uh, thought would be um, a quick victory. Instead, the resulting um, battle turned into um, a disaster for them. Stanley had joined their rank and almost certainly would have been killed or severely wounded, save for the quick action of his uh, um, uh, personal servant Selim Hashmi. So um, to go from Tabora to Gigi, which was a challenge, the party endured days of sitting around first in Tabora, exacerbated by an attack on Tabora by Marambo, uh, this time aided by uh, groups of Ongoni, offshots of um, marine warriors, set off earlier by wars in so southern Africa who had been creating uh, havoc uh, in the northward bound um, trade. As a result, Samuel decided that he needed to reach Ujiji via um, another route, one that would first head south to avoid conflict and then turn north at some point when condition um, in that direction uh, looked safer. The march began on September 20, despite Stanley suffering from another bout of malaria. It took them uh, through uncharted territory and porters began slipping away as before. 
Uh, this time, Stanley tried using a neck chain uh, that he had seen on passing slave caravans in a way to keep men in line. It had no more effect than the whip. Stretches of the um, uh, country were mostly inhabited. Uh, a large woodland area had boring swarms of tsetses that spread uh, sleeping sicknesses, um, kept people out, and beyond it, other had fled or uh, been killed by recent raids in search of uh, slaves and ivory. Scattered bodies by the wayside uh, revealed the presence of smallpox. Sensing precautious time slipping away, Stanley ordered the men to turn north in uh, the hope of reaching the Malagarasi River, the mouth of uh, which lay just south of Ujiji. Thus began what Stanley labeled a series of troubles, in quote. Um, the most serious involved uh, running short of food uh, to the point where starvation loomed. Good fortune, though, uh, eventually came their way in the form of a village with ample provision to sell. On November 1st, they reached the Malagarasi. A passing caravan brought word about a white man spotted in Gigi. Stanley thus decided to abandon the river route and take a more direct one overland. Um, now in populated country, Onirus uh, Hongas demanded again, and they um, had to be met. On November 10th uh, in Ujiji, finally, um, well, the Ujiji finally came to view, and um, sorry, yeah, it's the right, it's the right slide. Sorry about that. Um, and so uh, Stanley saw burden, uh, a burden pale-looking man standing amidst a, a crowd and presumably uttered the word that would follow him for the rest of his life and through time, and that are parodied uh, up to this day. Dr. Livingston, I presume. The answer was reportedly a simple yes. Uh, Livingston had a reputation for disliking intrusion on his privacy, even running away from would-be visitors, and thus Stanley worried about how he would be received. Uh, he needed, uh, he shouldn't have, uh, for the two men spent the remainder of their days in pleasant conversation. With the doctor thankful for the supplies Stanley brought with him, further conversation deepened their relationship, and Livingston even suggested that they join forces to seek, um, uh, to quote, finish his discoveries, uh, in, end of quote, Livingston term, about the sources of the Nile. Stanley still um, not seeing himself as a geographer and also not wanting to engage in what he thought was an onerous distraction from his primary purpose of reporting on the encounter, balked at the idea, but then agreed to a simpler plan that involved determining whether the Rusizi River flowed into or out of the northern end of the Tanganyika Lake. Slowly making their way uh, uh, northward by boat, they found that the river flowed into the lake and therefore uh, could not be part of um, uh, the Nile drainage uh, system. Um, upon returning to Gigi, the two men confronted the question of what to do next. After evaluating the option, they decided to head for uh, Quihara so that Livingston could pick up uh, supplies left for him there in anticipation of continued uh, uh, geographical travels. The journey began on December 27, uh, following a circuitous and uncertain route designed to avoid uh, areas where they might encounter conflict. After 54 days, they finally reached their goals with uh, all in poor shape due to various illness and lack of food. Making matter worse, the, um, they found Livingston surprise in shambles due to spoilage and theft. Stanley quickly went about finding replacement, but no porter could be found. Nirembo still held the upper hand in the region, and thus caravans and any kind, um, caravans of any kind, had to come to a stop, meaning no job opportunities existed. Stanley concluded that the only way to hire porters for Livingston was to return to Bagamoyo. The thought of leaving the doctor pained Stanley to the core. Livingston had become uh, some kind of beloved father figure, and when the time to leave came on March 14th, Stanley recorded, quote, the regret I feel now is greater than any pains I have endured, end of quote. The small party, um, 
he managed to pull together and move fast at the start, but on March 18, the Masika rains broke earlier than usual, forcing them to force uh, to ford rivers in high flood, a challenge made worse by a rare tornado that turned the countryside into a scene of devastation, a uh, howling waste, according to Stanley. On May 6, the exhausted men reached Bagamayo. Uh, upon hearing that Livingston had been found, the search and rescue mission sent out from England disbanded, leaving um, a large cache of goods up for purchase. And on May 27, 57 men, uh, non-slaves, set off for Quihara to, find, to go uh, and uh, meet with Livingston again. His task completed two days later, Stanley boarded a ship and headed to England. And I'm going to stop here. Not sure if there are any, any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mathis, for your, for your presentation. Um, I will just make this a bit smaller like this. Thanks. Um, thank you. And uh, I, will, I will ask some questions that we... Yes, please. So the first question is, um, are there any photos of the meeting between Stanley and Livingston? Great question. So no, for one good reason. Stanley uh, never brought a um, camera during that trip. Uh, so he made several, as you can see, uh, sketches in his diaries reporting uh, um, reporting on the um, landscape and uh, uh, some tentative portraits as well, but there are no photos. And that uh, once he was back in London, that he, he it was a key issue to actually um, uh, uh, going his way to say that he actually met with Livingston. Um, and the way it was eventually accepted, especially uh, by um, the Royal Geographical Society, was that when he came back, uh, Livingston gave uh, to Stanley his diaries and a set of maps with his handwriting, and the family and several geographer friends of Livingston uh, were able to say, yeah, that's obviously, that's obviously Livingston handwriting and his data's. Mm -hmm. He took a camera uh, later on during his Trans-African expedition. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so next question. When, when looking at Stanley's publications, are there things that Stanley censored, uh, things that we can read in the archives, but that Stanley doesn't mention in his book, How I Found Livingston, for example? In other words, uh, how different is the story he tells in his book compared to what he what we learned from these archives? Well, um, just to be quantitative here, basically the archives and the journals are amounting to 550 pages. I, I don't have a volume as obviously I'm home, not in the museum. I don't have a volume of the first edition of How I Found Livingston, but as far as I remember, it was way less than that. So obviously some elements are uh, not there. Um, also, you have to understand that at that time, the um, uh, we, we, Stanley was in uh, under contract with the New York Herald. So it was not his advantage to cross his boss in any way, including in uh, Books and Beaver. So uh, it's also a reason why he was very careful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the archives give another type of information and also information that were not published so far. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm just saying, please, if you still have questions, we have some time left for questions. So please, uh, if you have some, you can ask them in the questions tab. Uh, um, I, do I have access to that? No. Oh yeah, I do. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next question I'll ask is, uh, did Stanley ever face the accusations of his cruelty during his later life? And did he write about it uh, at all in his diaries? Um, so it's way in the later life, not necessarily connected to uh, Livingston, but uh, there was a set indeed of um, a set of lawsuits, but that's way, way later. Um, we're in the 1890s, so we're like almost 
20 years after, uh, after the Livingston expedition. Um, I know that there is a researcher working exactly on that topic, uh, so I can't wait for his book to be out. Um, as uh, you may guess, of course, uh, what we're going through for like the past, uh, the past year has uh, put in shambles some publication plan. But um, mm -hmm. if the person uh, who wrote the question um, uh, can send me an email, uh, I'll make sure that uh, to put him in, in, in touch with a, with a researcher if that researcher is, is uh, um, open to, to discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, um, I'll put you into contact with, uh, with that person. Um, I'm going to go ne to the next question. Uh, were there other political reasons for engaging the search of Livingston? Well, the, the area uh, through which Stanley and the caravans traveled were very well known. Uh, the British the British Empire was starting to have a, a strong uh, um, foothold uh, at that time, but we're still in right in the middle of the scramble for Africa. Now you have to remember this, Stanley at that time was not under contract with any political power in any way. Uh, he was under contract with uh, uh, an American newspaper, and at that time of his life, he was really proud to consider himself, uh, though he was uh, originally born in, in, in uh, Wales, he was proud to consider himself as an American self-made man. So um, they were political implication later on, uh, but not, I would say, directly connected on what happened on the ground during uh, Stanley's travel to meet with Livingston. Mm -hmm. And so um, Stanley's travels for Leopold II, that was, that came after, right? That was after- Oh Livingston. yes, um, at that time, I'm not even sure Stanley was on the radars of, of Leopold or any mm -hmm. king or queen or, or president of any country. Mm -hmm. uh, that really came way later on. Um, uh, Stanley, uh, obviously, um, Leopold's attention about Stanley was obviously triggered uh, in 78. So we're like six years after uh, this, the Livingston expedition. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the topic of my next book. You'll, you'll have to invite me back on Museum Talks <laughs> for that. Okay, we'll make sure we do. Um, all right, um, we have a few more questions. Um, the famous words are not to be found in the diaries, so were they surely pronounced? Are we sure they were actually pronounced? That's a great question. Um, so I will need, if you go back, uh, oh no, you can't, let me just forget it. So uh, yeah, in the diary, what is interesting is the following. So we have Stanley's diary number 11, where he go in deep with the meeting on day, um, it was November 10th. And so the entire description of the meeting start is almost word per word what has been published. Except that as you can see, it's actually the, the page that I shared a little bit earlier, uh, um, the diary. The, 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 the last bit of the page is like super crammed. And so is, normally, is the, you know. The, is it the one we can see on the screen or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it, as you can see, it's like super, super crammed mm -hmm. at the bottom of it. Um, and so it should have, the, the, the meeting should have continued on the next pages, except that that pages is missing. Yeah. So at this, at this moment, uh, there are, of course, a lot of different theories. Um, uh, did he or did he not? Uh, some biographers are like, well, you know, the page starts as uh, in the book and it reads very uh, fluidly. Uh, it could totally go with the same way. Other biographers are, are uh, arguing that when Stanley published, uh, when Stanley published uh, How I Found Livingston, he had no idea that Livingston was dying. Livingston was supposed to come back to uh, London, and so it would have been detrimental to detrimental to uh, Stanley's reputation 
um, not to uh, basically to lie about the meeting because Livingston was way much more well known than Stanley at that time. So uh, others are like, well, you know, we don't have the page, so he didn't say it. I think that what is important to remember is just the following. We simply don't have the page. So that's that's an open ended question. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. OK, thank you. Um, next question. What drove Stanley to undertake this mission? What are the next steps in your research on these archives? Are there, are there important themes that you would like to explore further? I guess you mentioned. Thank you for, group, yeah, uh, it, totally. So thank you for this question. Uh, it's always appreciative when someone, you know, is uh, uh, connecting uh, uh, with, uh, with the researchers and what we do on, on, a, on an everyday basis. So uh, first part of the question was about Stanley's what drove Stanley to undertake this oh, mission? Oh, right. Uh, his boss. His boss told him, you go there and you get me an interview with Livingston. Uh, don't ever, ever, never, ever underestimate the power of bosses. Um, then the other question about what are my next steps in this research. So actually, I'm currently writing or working with a, a set of uh, scholars, including uh, Professor Newman, but not only Professor Newman, it's, it's a big undertake. Uh, and this time I'm interested in uh, Stanley's, let's say, Leopoldian years. So that's like a huge jump uh, because um, I think the way we decided to work um, was with Professor Newman, but also at the museum was that, okay, what are the diaries that uh, people want to see the most? So we, I basically pulled up the statistical uh, um, list of you know how many how many uh, um, external researchers uh, want to have access or ask copies or request a visit for diary numbers X Y Z, and so based on that, it was fairly clear that the the attention of external researchers was first focused on the Livingston expedition. So we decided to go there first. It was also for a slightly easier in the sense that uh, it's only two years of Stanley's life. So it was more condensed. So whatever issue we may um, go through uh, during um, our publication, transcription publication process, that would have been it would have been slightly easier for us to work that out. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we have like the methodology, the process and the way to work pretty, pretty panned out, well, it's time to move on to the next groups of years, uh, which are attracting the most uh, uh, queries, requests uh, and question. And those are the years 1880 to 85, uh, devoted to um, uh, Stanley's trip on behalf of uh, Leopold II. So um, yes, that's what we're working on right now. Uh, as I said, um, my next book is coming. I certainly hope I'll be back uh, uh, for a museum talk by then. Um, in the meantime, um, please be patient with us all. We're doing the best that we can considering the situation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, a few more questions. It seems Stanley was not interested in describing in describing what he saw too much. Are there any information on the lands he crossed, the names of chiefs, local resources? Oh yeah, it's full of that. It's just that I only had like uh, um, uh, half an hour, which I trespassed of an extra 20 minutes. So um, it's absolutely full of that. There are lists of people, uh, um, uh, examples of discussion uh, with locals, uh, uh, local resources that he's capable of tracing, uh, local resources that are being uh, uh, part of the commercial routes uh, between um, various uh, areas. Uh, in Eastern Africa. So yeah, just that, I mean, if that's what you're into, be my guest, you're gonna have a <laughs> great day. <laughs> okay, great. Um, if I got it right, Stanley got the order to find Livingston and this order seemed quite important. I wonder why there was on the other hand, less support for him from home as it seems. Excuse me, me wrong English, please, no native speaker. That's okay. 
I don't thank you for thank you for your question. Very interesting question. So, there are several theories about that. Um, the the question of the reception of Stanley when he was back in Europe and then in the U.S. is uh, has been published. I'd be very happy. Uh, I if if you can send me an email or if I have your email afterwards, I'd be very happy to send you a few reference on the topic. Bottom line. Uh, Stanley was considered uh, at that time by the British as uh, uh, an American journalist, not part of, let's say, the British colonial uh, um, officers of the time. And the Ge Ge Royal Geographical Society in London was organizing right when Stanley was meeting in Ujiji with Livingston, um, the Royal Geographical Society uh, was uh, was organizing their own expedition to go and meet with Livingston, and basically Stanley yunked the the, the yunked the article and the the um, the ability to do so by coming up first and publishing his dispatches in his American uh, newspaper. So that's one of the explanation. Basically, U.S. U.K. Rival, uh, intellectual media rivalry of the time. Mm -hmm. Not the only, not the only reason, but one of them. Okay, thank you. Um, I will take one last question um, because we we've we've done around an hour already. But um, a Congolese friend told me that during his travel across Central Africa, Stanley was welcomed by the local population because he used to share meals <clears throat> with his guests. Is this right? Are there other reasons for explaining the fact that Stanley could cross the continent with very little troubles? Okay, uh, sorry, I had an issue with my connection. I got the question right. <clears throat> I just want to make sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's an, a very interesting question. Um, I'm afraid I'll have to bail on that one, uh, but I'll make sure to uh, be in touch with you as soon as the, the next book is out, because that's exactly one of the uh, uh, issues. Let's just say that uh, all in all, um, his Wapagazi and Kirangozi uh, really trained Stanley's well in many ways. There was obviously a lot of knowledge transfer from uh, uh, the uh, scouts and interpreter uh, um, and porters and, and soldiers that he hired from them to Stanley. And also the, 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 the discussion between Stanley and Livingston proved out to be uh, full of information for him to understand that uh, rules of diplomacy and etiquette varies vastly uh, from one area to the next. And so I think that it's this acceptance of the fact that um, we we are all from a different type of cultural background. That doesn't mean that we may get on well. That doesn't mean that we're, uh, um, uh, cultural misunderstanding do not happen, but it means that at least he was probably paying attention to that, which also goes with the previous question about you know uh, the attention to locals and localities and, and uh, resources. He was paying attention and you can find that in his in his diaries indeed. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna stop here because we've already over time. Um, thank you again, Mathilde, for your presentation and for- Thank you for having me. Questions. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and uh, so, like I said, uh, this is the book. And if, you, if you're interested in buying it, I'll put the, the link of our shop in the chat. Um, if you're interested, there you go. So you can, uh, you can, you can get it there if you want to. Um, well, I, I'd like to thank everyone for your questions, or your many questions, uh, for being here today with us. And, uh, I hope to see you next time for the next uh, museum talk. So goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.